Today, we want to talk about the idea of parametric equations. We're not doing something exactly new when we talk about parametric equations. We are still just going back to describing a curve, a one-dimensional curve in R2. So specifically, one-dimensional curves in two-dimensional space. So specifically, we're describing one-dimensional curves in two-dimensional space. That is, we're describing a bunch of x points with ordered pairs x, y. So it's just a bunch of points x, y. We're just describing a bunch of points, a bunch of ordered pairs, and we're making a one-dimensional curve in two-dimensional space. We already have ways of doing this, but they each have limitations. So one way we've done this is describe one variable as a function of the other variable. One way we have for this is to describe one variable as a function of the other variable. This is very restrictive to require that one variable be a function of the other variable, but that's one of the reasons that we like it because it's very predictable and it will follow certain rules that we can count on. So for example, y equals the square root of one minus x squared. Here's an example of a function. y is a function of x, and we know what this function will tell us. So this is a collection of points that forms a semicircle in quadrants one and two. So here is a bunch of coordinates. I needed the y-axis to be in the middle. And we're just describing a bunch of points, one, zero, and up to here, zero, one, negative one, zero, and many other points in the middle. It's actually one of my better semicircles. It's a little bit sketchy, but more or less symmetric. So here we have y written as a function of x. We could also write x as a function of y. So as an alternative, if we write x is the square root of one minus y squared. Here I'm looking at the positive square root, but now x is a function of y. So we're gonna have a semicircle going sideways. We're just describing a one-dimensional curve in two-dimensional space. And we're saying, here's how to figure out points X and Y. If I give you an X, here's how to find the Y. This is limited in that each X can correspond to only one Y so that our function will be well-defined. So you could probably guess where I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna make the whole circle. We can't describe X as a function of Y or Y as a function of X because each input is going to want two outputs to draw a circle. So another way that we can describe a curve, a one-dimensional curve in two-dimensional space is to, by writing an equation relating X and Y. So 
So another way that we can write, describe a one-dimensional curve in two-dimensional space is with an equation showing how X and Y are related. And for an example, I'm gonna say X squared plus Y squared is equal to one. Here's where we get an entire circle. Here are all the points where x squared plus y squared is equal to one. We know that that makes the whole circle. Since each, uh, since most of the x's correspond to two different y values, and most of the y values correspond to two different x values, we can't write x as a function of y or y as a function of x. So we can't describe the whole circle with a function of x or a function of y. We can't describe the circle with a function of x or a function of y. It fails the vertical line test. Each input correspond or some inputs correspond to two different outputs. When x is zero, y is one and negative one. And the same thing happens in the other direction. When y is zero, x is one and negative one. Some inputs correspond to more than one output. And we can't have functions like that. This is still pretty restrictive because the x and y core, uh, the x and y uh, coordinates have to be related in some way by an equation. So here's another way that we can describe a one-dimensional curve in two-dimensional space. And that's with parametric equations. We're gonna write X and Y as functions of some independent variable called the parameter. Rather than writing a relationship between X and Y, we write a relationship for, uh, with each coordinate as a function of some independent variable called the parameter. We're gonna write separate functions for X and Y with some other independent variable. This independent variable we call the parameter. For example, 
we're going to use this circle again. Because secretly, we've done this before. So here's one way it might look where we're defining a circle with parametric equations. Instead of x as a function of y, or y as a function of x, x and y are both functions of the parameter t. So I'm going to say x is the cosine of t and y is the sine of t. And then I'm going to tell the reader what values of t to plug in. Plug t between 0 and 2 pi. So instead of just a T instead of having just two rows in a table of values, I'm going to have three, one for my parameter. That's the stuff that we're plugging in. And then one for each of my coordinates. So I'm going to take t equals zero, not just plug it into one function, but plug it into both functions. Plug zero into the cosine of t and zero into the sine of t. And now I have coordinates. Then I'll plug pi over two because I'm taking gigantic back jumps. We're just plugging in a bunch of values of t into both functions and coming up with coordinates independently of each other as functions of the parameter. So we remember this parameterization from trigonometry where the cosine of t is the x and the sine of t is the y, and that's a circle going around, starting at x equals zero, or sorry, t equals zero on the positive x-axis and going counterclockwise around one time. So at that point, one zero, that corresponds to a particular value of the parameter. That happens when t is equal to zero. Then up here at the top, we'll be at the point zero one, and that corresponds to t equals pi over two. So the other thing that happens when we define this circle with these parametric equations is we also assign a direction to the curve. So this t equals zero is where we start. So we are also assigning this direction going counterclockwise.
And we can see we go all the way around the circle until we get to t equals two pi, where we end. So this is a different kind of gra uh, graphing. All we're doing is changing how we describe what's going on. We might be wondering, can our calculator do this? And I wouldn't have pulled out the calculator if the calculators could not do this. We do have to tell the calculator that we wanna do parametric equations. So if we go into the mode, first of all, I'm gonna switch to radians. I have a trig class. You can tell I have a trig class because I have my calculator in degrees and I'm not a physics teacher. And I'm also gonna switch from function to parametric. So now that the calculator is in parametric mode, it's gonna look different when I hit the function entry screen. Oops. So now each curve, so there's that first curve is in blue and then red and then the black and then purple and then there's half the green one. Each of those curves has an X and a Y. If I just plug in the X, The calculator doesn't know what to do. It's like, well, what do you want me to do? What do you want? I, I, you're just giving me an X. That gives me nothing. So if I go in and also give a Y. Oh, let me make sure my window is not something weird. Negative 10 to 10. Oh, I want zero to two pi, don't I? Two pi. I think that's the standard. Let's find out. So it'll draw our circle for us. Now, if you'll notice, the reason that I picked the TI-84 is that the processor is slow enough, you can actually see the circle form going around, just like we can plug in. All your calculator does when it graphs function is plug in all the X values you asked for, and then plot the points. So that's why they go from uh, left to right. Here, the calculator is doing the same thing. Over in the window, we told it the values that we wanna plug in for T t from zero to two pi, and I do this every 0.3 units. If I want, I can also change it to pi divided by 20. Notice it went a little bit slower because it was plugging in twice as many points. And this is technology from the 90s, so it's gonna take a while to render your images. You know what I mean? You're not gonna get like 60 FPS on your TI-84. We can go old school, pi divided by four. Now it's only gonna plot every uh, 45 degrees or pi over four radians. So unsurprisingly, it looks a little angular, right? So let's really take this back to the 90s. Here's our first generation World of Warcraft. This is what the wheels look like. Actually, no, that's too much. I think they were... That's a little bit better. It's a circle. So at this point, it doesn't look very good, very much like a circle, but we only told it to plug in five values and two of them are gonna be the same starting and end point. That's why we only see, like we could see four distinct sides and then it just connects the dots. So that's not very good. If we really want to mess with the processor, it's like, oh, come on, man. So much to plug in. And so you can see it really struggle as it plugs in. Two questions. So in this case, the advantage is that we can um, Define x and y 
coordinates independently of each other. So here we had two functions. X is a function of T and Y is a function of T, but we didn't have to have the restriction of Y being a function of X or X being a function of Y. We know that wouldn't work because a lot of the X's correspond to two different Y values. Here, it doesn't matter. Each X, uh, each T corresponds to one X and each T corresponds to one Y. Now, the other advantage that we have here, okay, let me, let me, let me get this from, 20 was pretty good. Now, notice that this is not a lot of circle. We know that if we increase the amplitudes of our sines and our cosines, that will increase the radius of our circle. So there's a bigger circle. And then we could start messing with things. If we wanna make an ellipse, oh wait, I should make the ellipse in the other direction. I could just change the radii. I, they're not radii once I have them different values, but that's all an ellipse is. Or should we say that's all a circle is? A circle is an ellipse where the horizontal and vertical distances are the same. So a circle is kind of a boring ellipse. But some interesting things can happen. So if instead of just the cosine going around once, if I start changing the period of the functions. So now the cosine is not just gonna start off at three, go down to negative three and come back up in one cycle. It's gonna do that twice. While the sine is two sine of t, it's gonna start off at zero, go up to two, down to negative two, and then back up to zero, but that'll only do that once. So now we get this weird thing. So what's happening, happened a little bit fast. It looked like it went from three zero to negative three two because that was when T was pi over two. The sign, the Y coordinate was up at, at, at two, but the X coordinate had already got to negative three. And then the next part from pi over two to pi was going the other direction. We could see it more if we increase the number of gaps. Yeah, so now the cosine, the X is gonna go back and forth three times. And so you can start getting very strange things. But it all makes sense because what happened? It went up and then down and then up again. That's the sign. Just went up, down and up again. But because the period of the co of, co of three cosine of three T that's going to go around the circle three times. So just look at the, just watch the X. Just watch the X as it goes back and forth three times. It went back and forth three times. So it started off here at three zero, went down to negative three, back up to three. That was one cycle or, and, or two pi over three. I should have done it in degrees because all I could divide, but that's fine. And then it went down to negative three and then back up to three, and then down to negative three and then back up to three. So that's making three loops. Then we're going to start making weird stuff. And things get real spiral. Any questions? Sorry, okay. We wouldn't be able to describe this with a function. I can't write y as a function of x because some of the x's have lots of uh, y values. Eesh, that'd be a mess. One thing we want to note, the other reason that I picked um, this particular example where x is cosine of t and y is sine of t is that they need to be compatible with each other. So if I take x of t as cosine of t and I plug it into this x squared, so I take cosine of t 
and then square it. And then if y is sine of t, and I plug that in for the y up here, we see that this, this, this equation, x squared plus y squared equals one, fits with what is supposed to happen. Because we know the cosine squared plus y, sine squared is equal to one. So the two agree with what things should look like. If x is cosine of t and y is sine of t, that should give us the same as x squared plus y squared equals one, and it does. So lucky us. How's everybody okay? So seeing this relationship and the stuff that we've already looked at on when, by playing around with stuff on the calculator, we can see that the stuff that we know about circles already still applies. We know that if we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, that's going to be a circle of radius r. And all we have to do in the parametric equations is adjust the amplitude of our x's and y's. If I take the x, uh, the r cosine t and r sine t and plug those into x squared plus y squared equals r squared, everything works out. One way to think about it is to take this x squared plus y squared equals r squared and turn it into a circle of radius one, or not really turn it into a circle of radius one, but divide by r squared. And then make x over r the cosine. And the y over r to be the sine. And then that tells you that x is r cosine of t and y is r sine of t. If the center has been moved, then we know our equation for the circle will just be shifted. So if we want to shift our circle, we just subtract from the x's before we do the squaring, and this will shift the center. Then if we do the same thing that we did in the previous example, divide everything by r squared, then x minus h over r should be the cosine of t. And the y minus k over r can be the sine of t.
And we can see, then we'll see what to do with parametric equations to shift the center. So if we multiply by R, that'll get us the radius that we want. And then if we add H and add K, we can move the center of our circle. So if I take this whole thing, uh, let's actually, let's go back to a circle. So if I do negative uh, one plus two cosine of T, and then three plus two sine of T, this will move, this should move the center of our circle to negative one, three. So there's our circle centered at the origin and there's our circle at negative one, three. So here's negative one and three, that's the center of our circle. If we trace on the red circle, we can see that when T is equal to zero, X is at one, three. Since the radius is two, that means the X is at, um, the center is at negative one. Also note that when we trace, pushing up just increases the T value by the specified amount. There's T at pi and we're at the other end, negative three and negative three, three. We've moved the center of the circle. Any questions? Then we can do all the crazy stuff that we did before. Okay, we're okay. This is just another way to describe a one dimensional curve in two dimensional space. Just make X and Y rather than being related to each other, or one is a function of the other, that's most restrictive, make them functions of some independent variable called the parameter. Then they could do all kinds of crazy stuff. Let's suppose that we have a curve already described with a function. We've already got the most restrictive form. We should be able to parameterize it. So for example, let's say y is x squared. So in this case, y is already a function of x. I don't know why already. Why is a function of X? Oh, I know why. Because I wanted to say X is already the independent variable. but we might want to describe this with parameters anyway. We might want to parameterize this curve, even though we have it described as a function, it might be for whatever we're doing, we need to parameterize it. If one of the variables is already an independent variable, just make that the parameter.
So x of t should just be t, make x equal to t, and then y can just be t squared. I've been saying function though. So y of t And then we just do this for all t. So if I make x equal to t and y equal to t squared, this is gonna come up weird. Let's stop and think about why. How come we only got that side of it? I said I was gonna give you a whole, a whole parabola and here I'm just giving you half a parabola. X is t, y is t squared, that should make a parabola. Why did we only get half a parabola? That's a good question. That's why we only got half a parabola because I only told the calculator to graph between t, t from zero to two pi. But if I want the whole parabola, I need to do this for all values of t. I can't tell the calculator to do all values of t. The calculator doesn't understand shit like infinity. So I'm just gonna go from like negative 10 to 10. And then we get both sides. Now I'm plugging in t equals negative 10. So that's gonna be the point negative 10 and then 100. So that was a little bit excessive. Right now, the calculator is like, oh, dude, why did you give me negative 10 to 10 if x is equal to t and x is only going from negative 6.6 .6 to 6.6? .6? I'm like, oh, you're right, calculator. I should just go negative 6.6 .6 to 6.6. .6. And I was like, oh, thank you. How about like a 0.1? Would that be better? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's even better because that's what it was going to plug in anyway because that's what the window is set. But then if, again, if I didn't want the calculator to sass me, I'd be like, oh, stop sassing me, calculator. It's going to be, oh. Too far. I think you can do a hundred though. Okay. I had so many points to plug in. So it's having a hard time, but that's how you slow these calculators down. You can't really do that with a modern computer. It's like, oh, you actually have to tell the computer to slow down because it renders things like almost instantly. But the calculator is like, well, I have a processor from the 90s. There are versions of this calculator that are in clear plastic that's so old. None of you understand that reference because you don't remember the time where manufacturers were selling electronics with transparent colored plastic. This is because you're all young and not old. But there are TI-84s out there, or TI-83s at the time, that have like transparent plastic, because that was the thing. Think iMac when they came in all the different colors. Does anybody even know what an iMac is? They used to be these gigantic computers. They also had a CRT. Does anybody know what a CRT is? Yeah. Not 2021 CRT, critical race theory. I'm talking cathode ray two. You can actually recycle CRT now and use it for something else entirely because no one is looking at a cathode ray tube anymore. That's an old TV that's all deep. And that's radiation. There's radiation that's like killing you and stuff. You know how you have a screensaver? That's because if you have one image on a CRT, it'll burn into the, the, the face and you'll be able to see it forever and just mess it all up. You know how pixel art looks so stupid? Look at pixel art on a proper CRT and it won't look as stupid anymore. It'll look like a, just a drawing. But with it pixel, because we can show the entire pixel instead of the pixel just being like a blob of color with like, that's why pixel art now looks stupid and it looks like normal if you look at it on a CRT. All right, that's it for today. I will see y'all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing. Bye. Bye. Thank you.